Friday, guys. Aaron from PhoneDog.com and a very special happy Friday because it's the 4th of July weekend. So you get that extra day off in most cases. You know, you get to cook out, watch fireworks. Now you have to ask yourself, which camera phone is going to be the best to take pictures of those fireworks? Well, I have a pretty good idea of two good ones. HTC Evo 3D, LG Optimus 3D. Why you ask? Because they both take pictures in 3D. They're the latest and the greatest in the camera departments with 3D capabilities. But you know what we do in phone dog land when you can't decide which one's the best, we do a dog fight. So you have the HTC Evo 3D over here, 1.2 gigahertz dual core processor, 4.3 inch display, dual 5 megapixel cameras on the back. Then you have the LG Optimus 3D coming to the state soon as the LG Thrill 4G on AT&T. 4.3 inch display over here, dual 5 megapixel cameras on the back. Pretty cool in its own right. Which one of these is the best? Which one should you go with? We're gonna find out in the dog fight. But first, special thanks to our guys at Best Buy. They do such a great job of hooking us up with phones in our Wampaw Bandit game because we give those to you so you get your chance to win. When you walk into Best Buy Mobile, you don't deal with rebates. You walk in, you pay that after rebate price. I don't like paperwork. You probably don't like paperwork unless you're like a CPA or an accountant or something. That you know you don't have to deal with rebates and crazy paperwork and waiting eight to ten weeks. Super cool in my book. But enough of that, let's get into it. HTC Evo 3D, LG Optimus. So I left those little icons in the top left-hand corner up there because I downloaded something while I was doing a break from the video. And you can see the differences here between Gingerbread and Froyo, uh, how the icons look different. You'll notice a lot of minor differences between the various builds of Android, and that's one of those between Froyo and between Gingerbread. So very minor, but thought I'd point out anyway. Also, you'll notice really quickly that I'm running Wi-Fi on both of these. My AT&T demo SIM card shut down. I don't have any um, regular size SIM cards on my personal AT&T account. I just have a micro SIM because I'm reviewing or working with the iPhone on the AT&T line. So I don't have one at the moment, didn't have time to run over to the AT&T store, so I'm running both of these on, on Wi-Fi. I absolutely hate doing reviews on Wi-Fi because it doesn't give you a true indicator of the network performance, but we'll just have to, uh, we'll skip that and focus just on the 3D performance and on the overall phone itself in this dogfight. So keep that in mind uh, that it's not, when you see the data speeds, things like that, I'm, it's reflecting the Wi-Fi uh, in my office, not Sprint's network or uh, AT&T's network. So we'll go over here to phone dog on both of these just to show you browser performance, not browser speed performance, but, uh, or you know, rather not network speed for performance, but just the way the browser pinches to zoom, things like that. So we'll wait for those to load. Okay, so that one loaded up, there we go, bam, phone dog. Hello, gorgeous, what's going on? Let's see here, so you can see phone dog's page here. Pretty quick to pinch to zoom, you can see the dual core, it's interesting because I said the same thing about the sensation. This one's a lot faster than the sensation 4G, and I don't know if it's because of the added memory, or if it's because of you know some carry enhancements that Sprint's done, that T-Mobile didn't do, or vice versa. But uh, it is a little faster. That said, it doesn't quite feel like a dual core device to me. It still feels like something maybe like a 1.2 gigahertz single core processor, but still, it's relatively fast in most day-to-day -day tasks. You, uh, you won't notice any slowdown. I've had a lag here or there, but nothing too wild. So you can see a portrait and landscape, pretty quick transition. And this is something I really like about Sense. When you go into Windows, it keeps a preview of the window. So when you go to another window, we'll open up whatever opens up, Sprint PCS, for example. Go back to Windows, you can see right where I left off on the phone dog page, if I zoom in and switch windows, it leaves it right there. So I know exactly where I left off, and it's nice, it's a nice visual as opposed to the stock Android look, which I believe this one has. So let's see. I guess it doesn't. I take that back, I stand corrected. Yeah, no, this one they have a custom UI or custom UI in the browser as well on this one, but stock Android just shows text icon or text things like a text plus and then the uh, link itself, like best phone news and then the link below that. So just a little bit cleaner and you know, of course Optimus 3D apparently does the same thing as well. I forgot about the, uh, the browser menu in here and you'll notice some different things. You'll notice that the, uh, the URL area goes away when I zoom in, zoom out, but you can see that to me it's just a little bit more fluid on the Optimus 3D. There's no checkerboarding, there's little to no lag, it's pretty responsive. And then down here you have your settings where I can customize the browser. I can open up a new window if I wanted to. We'll bring up a second one there just for kicks. You can see the two and a pretty cool little transitional effect there when you go back and forth between the windows. Now, something particularly interesting about this phone, it reminded me as I was pinching to zoom, the touch input seems a little bit off. The same thing happened with the Revolution, and I don't know if it's the LCDs that LG is using or what, but when you go over here, I found that when I go in through the menu and I'm scrolling down and I see something I want, like messaging, for example, it takes me several clicks, just like that, to get it to go in 
to messaging. So it's just not as responsive, whereas I've never had that problem on an HTC device or Samsung device. I mean, it's always you know calibrated perfectly. I click a link, it clicks and lets me right into that link. I've seen this a lot with this phone where I'll click two or three times and it doesn't quite recognize my input. So something to keep in mind. The Revolution did it for me too. This one's done it. The G2X did not do it. So I don't know if it's something that's you know relating to their user interface or some conflict there, but still kind of frustrating. Let's get right into 3D and take a look at the 3D cameras on both of these phones. And again, it's unfortunate because you can't really see the 3D capabilities uh, on camera, which is kind of a bummer, but we're going to camera here on the HTC. And I really like this toggle because all I have to do is pop that and you'll see, let's see if you can see it in the camera. Let's do like the back of another Evo 3D here. And then all of a sudden you can see it's in 3D. And then back to 2D, pretty cool and nice and a nice easy transition. Uh, between the two. So you can see, this is something that's interesting. I worked with the Optimus 3D. I was very spoiled by the 3D because it is darn good on the Optimus 3D. I mean, it's impressive. The depths are impressive. And you can be still pretty close to a subject and see some depth. So I've been really, really impressed with the 3D capabilities. And you know, I used this for 20 or 30 minutes and didn't get a headache from this device, which is a big one for me um, for 3D because I usually get you know pretty bad headaches from things like that. I have sensitive eyes. So that bothers me. This one, on the other hand, you know, Five or ten minutes in, I have a terrible headache. The 3D is just not as quality or not as high quality on this as it is on the Optimus 3D. So if you're buying this phone or you're looking between these two and you, you know, it's all about 3D, who cares about the network? Who cares about Android 2.3 versus 2.2? Who cares about the processor? Whatever, the Optimus 3D uh, is your phone because the 3D content uh, is much better, much, much better. But we'll take a look here at, uh, we'll just do my keys, for example. And uh, we'll go over here. And uh, yes, I do have a My Panera Bread card because Panera Bread's awesome and I've picked up quite a few rewards from that. So just pointing that out. But let's see if we can get some depth here based on the keys. And I'm just really impressed with the 3D content on this. I mean, it is quite impressive. And let me see if I can find a good picture that I can show you. Um, and of course, you can't see this in the camera, but let's do, well, like here, for example, here's one. Uh, and you can't quite see it, but show you the 3D transition. Just the water bottle, the depth between the water bottle and the computer behind it. Uh, is very noticeable on the 3D. It doesn't give me a headache, and you know, I hold it, holding it out the right way, holding it out properly, and it's very cool to look at the effects of uh, the 3D. You can see the depth under the computer and things like that. Now, whereas on this one, let me see if I have any st uh, stock pictures here that I've taken in 3D. It looks like I took the pre-3 uh, in 3D. But let me take the keys to be fair here. Do you like the physical camera button? That's a big one for me. It's a big, easy camera button to push. But again, you know, just not as great as the Optimus 3D. So both are five megapixel cameras, or both are dual five megapixel cameras. So you're getting about the same quality, roughly the same quality. Um, I found that stills, 2D pictures seem to look a little better on the Evo 3D to me. Uh, I took some pictures outside yesterday, testing the Evo 3D, and you know, the picture quality is decent. It's no eight megapixel camera, or it's no iPhone four or five megapixel camera, but it's certainly good and doable, uh, given the right amount of light, being on the right settings. But 3D, this is where it's at. So let's see. Just load up something else that's 3D because I don't want to spend too much time on the pictures. This is something else I like as well. So you can go over here and let's say, you know, here's one I took of a part of my office and it's in 3D right now. Let's say I don't want it in 3D. All I have to do is click that button and it converts it over to 2D for me right away. Now the 2D quality on this phone is not the best. Um, LG cameras are not incredible to me from the G2X to the revolution to this, but uh, 3D is oddly impressive. Uh, on these phones. So, you know, I kicked it back to 2D, want to throw it to 3D, bam, right back in 3D. So, I have that easy toggle there. Whereas with this one, when you shoot it, you either shoot it in 2D or 3D, and for the life of me, I can't switch it back to 3D. So, if there's some way, I must be missing it because it's not, uh, it's not possible so far as I can tell. But let's see the Green Hornet just for example so you can see some content that's shot in 3D. Okay, I do need to register with HTC Watch. I don't want to waste the time doing that in the video. So, we'll see here. Uh, let's do... Asphalt 6, for example, and let me get this started up. Okay, so we're started up here. It's going into 3D, and you can see it, it is, um, and this is an interesting thing about watching professionally done content like games or movies. The 3D capabilities are much better, obviously. But you can see here, 3D, let's touch to continue. Do a free race. Nassau, normal. I'm just gonna throw through this really quickly here. Race, driving a Mini Cooper. I probably should have changed that, but. Hey, I'm not hating on Mini Cooper, so anybody that has a Mini Cooper, not hating on them, I'm just saying I would have driven like the bomb diggity Honda Civic or something like that. 
and the race like a really tricked out like 800 horsepower Honda Civic. You know what it is. Okay, so here we go. Blah blah blah. Let's go. Here we go. All you have to do is place in the top three. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this is how I've said in past videos, this is how I drive to the grocery store. Mm. Yeah, okay, whoops. That's still pretty how much I, that's how I drive to the grocery store. I'm not sure why it's not. I'm that person that never looks at the directions of the game before I actually play it, and I'm like, how am I turning? Because I didn't look at that page that said how to break, how to turn, you know. Um, but you get the idea. You can see the 3D content. I flip it back and forth so you can see the transition there. But uh, the content is very good on the Optimus 3D. You need quite a bit out of the box. And let's take a look at 3D games and apps just so you can see that as well. Okay, so it just goes into Nova Asphalt. I've actually never been in this. So let's go off Nova Asphalt and Gulliver's Travels. Same stuff uh, there. Let's do a Smart Bench test. I kind of fooled you there, didn't I? You thought I was going to say Quadrant Standard. No, I downloaded Smart Bench. We're going to give it a go because we're changing it all up in this video to... Uh, Make it a little bit different. So Smart Bench loading on both of these. We're going to run Smart Bench and see which one's best. Now call quality because I have had an AT&T SIM card in this, and of course this is running on Sprint right now. Call quality is pretty good on both of these devices. The earpieces are nice and loud. I've had no problems with that. People having trouble hearing me, anything like that. The volume being too low. The downside is Sprint's having network issues right now. Their 3G speeds are incredibly slow. I mean, I'm talking like 0 0.01 megabits per second to point, you know, max 0.3 megabits per second in a lot of places. So very frustrating there. Uh, and you know, for somebody that you relies on data a lot, you know, and a device that really touts itself as a data device, that's kind of frustrating. Now Optimus 3D, um, call quality though has been fine on both. 1500 milliamp hour battery over here, 1730 milliamp hour battery over here. Despite the difference, I actually they're about the same. I mean honestly I've worked with both of these. I put my SIM card in it when I was using this uh, a couple of weeks ago and I was able to make it through the day on the Optimus 3D. I have trouble making it through the day on the Evo 3D with moderate use, and I don't even use 3D, uh, but I, I do have trouble. I pulled it off the charger actually yesterday. I was using the Evo 3D. Pulled it off at 9.30 in the morning, and by five o'clock, it needed to be recharged. So I was actually um, out and about. Uh, I was not working in the office. I was up at a coffee shop writing an article, and uh, I plugged it right in, and then it worked until about 12 o'clock and needed to be charged. Again, so you know, if you're not near a power outlet, that might be an issue. But both of these are definitely going to be uh, power hungry devices. Productivity index 2,416 on this one, and then uh, stock, you know, Android 2.3.3, just to give you comparison, 1,664. So just compare it to the Galaxy S2, which is over here with 4,664, and then you can see over here this one pulled in at 2,991. So according to SmartBench. This one is the faster one. The LG Optimus 3D is the faster one uh, with 2,991, 2,779 with the stock ROM of Android, just to give you comparison. Now, the haters in the videos, they're going to be like, you should use Quadrant Standard. Well, I wanted to mix it up a little bit. So, you know, people have asked for Smart Bench. So, it's something a little bit different. But a winner has to be declared in the dogfight. You know, based on overall specs, based on all it does, I have to give it to the Evo 3D for a couple reasons. One, it's available from a carrier, so you can walk into any Sprint store nationwide right now and buy it for 200 bucks. This isn't available yet. You can buy it through specialty retailers. It's gonna range from about $600 up. So this one's available on a two-year agreement. Two, it's running the latest versions of Android and Sense. So it's up-to-date on the software front. It has a fast processor. It may lag from time to time, sure, but it has a lot to offer. And Sense is fantastic. The 3D content, not the best on this device. It's better on the Optimus 3D and battery life, you're gonna be slightly happier with the Optimus 3D. Not by much, but slightly happier with this. So the Evo 3D is the winner, but who knows? In another dogfight, perhaps something else could steal the Evo 3D's thunder. Much more coverage to come on Phone Dog with both of these devices, the Evo 3D, the Optimus 3D, on the site, so stay tuned. Be sure to like us on Facebook. We just started the greatest tech giveaway ever. It went live as I was shooting this video. I actually just saw the email pop up on the computer in front of me. It's live now. We're giving away Asus Transformers, Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1s, Apple iPad 2s, and HP touchpads. And if you refer a friend and they like us and they win, you win as well. Super cool. Facebook.com slash phone dog for your chance to win one of those tablets. And be sure to follow me on Twitter, phone dog underscore Aaron, with any questions, comments, thoughts, etc. that you have. And on my Facebook page at Facebook.com slash phone dog 
AB. Okay, guys, I'm out. Thanks so much. Happy Friday. Have a good weekend. Let me know what you think. Should the Evo win or should it have been the Optimus 3D? We'll see you next time. Have a great weekend.